on tonight's show, we have Comic-Con. And more Comic-Con, because Comic-Con was everywhere this week. We're talking movies and the TV shows being broken down there. And also from Comic-Con, Mass Effect 4. Stay tuned. Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. Nope. That's that's your cue. What? That's, that's your cue. <laughs> yeah, even though it was a little delayed, we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. And, uh, yeah, so, but as you saw in our little intro there, we do have a lot of Comic-Con news coming out, because Comic-Con really is, is is a movie, TV shows, and comics thing. We won't really talk about the comic side, but uh, we'll talk about all the movies that had something to do with comics, because that's, like, everything nowadays. And TV. All of those have to do with comics. Everything is if off of comics. like us to give our... Un- completely unbalanced, unexpertise opinion about comics. Yeah, Just, t- let us know. We'll, I'll we'll, tell you we'll what I think is cool. I guess, uh, even <laughs> yeah, though I probably we'll won't read them later. I'll just wait for the actual movie version to come out because you know it's never that far for comics. But uh, yeah, and also at Comic Con, which was funny enough, uh, Mass Effect Four. So we got all that stuff going on tonight. But let's start it off the same way we start off every entertainment show week and that is with the horrible movie of the week review <laughs> and yes Brendan has been choreographing all new ones the whole time so <laughs> um, and this week I got subjected to the torture from listener Marie and uh, that was the movie called Empire State now this movie features Liam Hemsworth and the Rock, Dwayne Johnson, in it. So you think, ah, eh, well, you know, the two pretty well-known actors. The Rock, I actually like a lot of the stuff he's in. So maybe this won't be as horrible as I think it was. He's kind of 50-50, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. And this is the 50 side that falls horribly wrong. So, yeah, so the movie I watched was Empire State. And a brief synopsis on this movie is it's set in 1982 New York City. And, um, yeah, so that's where you get all the characters from. And they're horribly, horribly acted and horribly scripted, but we'll get onto that a little bit later. But pretty much the whole synopsis is that uh, it's a kid, gets a job at a armored car company, discovers that the armored car company doesn't do any type of security at all from their millions of dollars that they have. And, um, yeah, plans on robbing the place. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't sound like the worst synopsis for a movie. Robbing but, uh, the armored car company? Yeah, uh, but it turns out to be pretty darn bad. So let's just jump right into it. Um, So, you like that, Ma? If you heard that line I just said, that is all Liam Hemsworth says for the first, like, five minutes of the movie, like, when he's talking, because he's bringing his mom a statue, and he says that literally, like, 20 million times. You like that, Ma? Well, you like it, Ma? Well, you don't like it, Ma? You like it, Ma? And it gets really, really annoying. I mean, at one point, this movie, I swear, I swear, it's as if... A monkey that knows sign language, so an ape uh, that speaks sign language, taught a 10-year-old kid what culture was like in New York in the 1980s, and then that kid went to go ahead and write the script. Because the dialogue is all, you guys, like, you starts off every sentence in this whole movie. I don't I don't understand how that works. That's, that's legitimate New York City, Brian, in the 1980s. Clearly. Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, it, it's... And really, 1980s New York, if you think about it, is a really cool place, especially early 80s. That's where the hip-hop was starting to develop. And, and before the crack hit the scene, um, it was a pretty cool place to be, I, I would like imagine. Right after the crack hit the scene and when the city was in disrepair and in the greatest time of degradation, 
actually. No, I don't think I don't think it hit the scene until like mid to late eighties. So yeah, it was supposed to be really a fun time, but this movie somehow sucks and all the fun clearly, out of that time. Clearly, from our commentary, crack is the only thing that led to problems in New York City at the time. Of course, that's the only thing. Is that the scene was perfect beforehand? And then crack, crack made it bad. Terrible. <laughs> Remember some crack? But yeah. Not so, a complex. <laughs> so this kid wants to be an NYPD officer. Of course, he gets rejected from the NYPD because, and they keep bringing it back. They introduce this character who's supposed to be his best friend, and they let everybody know in the beginning of the movie this guy is the biggest loudmouth. He's a dummy. He gets everybody in trouble all the time. And so this, the, the main character does not make it into the NYPD because he has an arrest record due to his friend who has a big mouth about everything. And they, they go out of their way to really set it up that this kid just has a big mouth. So, kid doesn't get into the NYPD. Um, main character doesn't get into the NYPD. And so he goes ahead and gets a job as a security, you know, an armed car, armored car driver. Of course, like his... Yeah. And of course, on his second day, the armored car gets robbed. And the stupidest part of the movie probably happens right there because these armored car robbers sh- take the time to shoot them up, both of the guys up. One guy only takes one in the bulletproof vest. They kill another guy. There's a whole stack of money bags. Now, they run to the back of the armored car, but it, since it's the first stop of the day, there's no money there. And then they just run past all the money bags after they go ahead and kill everybody. Like, there's no money. All right, let's get out of here. Really? Really? You're not going to at least take one bag of money that's sitting right in front of you? And they don't. Yeah, I mean, if you already went through the trouble, I understand you wanted a bigger payout, but it, there's something there. Like, you know, get get something. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, literally, it's within, like, he doesn't even have... He just has to bend over and grab a bag of money. <laughs> That's it, all he has to do. But well, no, worth no, 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 no. That this, These are some busy thieves, all right? These are some busy thieves. So, so yeah, so that happens. Uh, the kid gets moved to desk duty after this incident and finds out that nobody really cares about the money. They Half the time, they don't even unload it off the trucks. There's no count of the money in this vault, uh, and everything's crazy. So, yeah, what happens next? The kid tells the loudmouth about uh, how nobody guards it, and they hatch a plot to rob the place. And again... Why would you tell the guy with the biggest mouth of all time that you know how to rob this place? Not a smart idea because everybody's going to know. And it just so happens two of the local thugs in the neighborhood find out and they want part of it. So they all go and they hatch a plot to rob this place. Well, the night they're going to rob the place, uh, turns out another crew is already robbing the place. And the cops show up and kill those guys. So what do you think? You say, okay, well, hey, we got away with one there. Uh, these other guys took the bullet for us, literally, and um, and so we should probably just forget it and move on. Well, and no. Apparently, there is security on this because yes. cops show up and kill yes. the people that are involved. Yes. Uh, but what does Loudmouth decide to do? Hey, I'm just gonna rob the place the next night. So yeah, he does it, and it just it goes downhill from there. Uh, I I mean, I and I keep looking at this movie and how I judge movies that are going to be on the horrible movie of the week as if it has more than three stars on Netflix, I don't watch it. Uh, but this one had exactly three stars, but I kept thinking to myself, who in their right mind gave this movie even three stars? And for it to average three stars, some people probably got it, gave it four somewhere in there. And it's like, this is at best a two-star movie. At best. And it just really... It's hard for me to really give too much of a synopsis of this movie without just saying the word you, because that is half of the dialogue. In the, it's like, yous don't know what yous are doing. Yeah, yous guys got to get to use stuff together, yous. Like, I'm I, I mean, down! It just, it, it, was, it was hard. It was hard. It really was. Um, and so, I'll be honest with you. I probably, with my face looking at the screen, fell asleep with my eyes open for probably about 15 to 20 minutes of this movie. And that's not something I've done very often. Last time I can remember doing that was freshman year of high school biology class. And that's about it. That's because my biology teacher once told us that there was a hurricane that blew through Illinois. And I was like, do you mean a tornado? And she said, no, it was a hurricane. And I said, well, you can't really get hurricanes in landlocked areas. And she said, no, I'm the science teacher. It was a hurricane. So, yeah. that guy, You I kinda can kept get the hurricanes in landlocked places, Brian. She was right. It's just... Very rare. No. 
No, there's never been a hurricane. In fact, some of our there. hurricanes have gone into like remember the the one just like last year went into Pennsylvania, like far into Pennsylvania. It wasn't as bad as it was on the coast, but it was it was there. It it gets degraded from hurricane class winds by the time it hit, goes that far in. There's no so. Go ahead and tell Brennan why he's wrong about how you cannot have hurricanes. <laughs> well, in, we're gonna find out that this whole time you you had an intelligence Lamont. teacher who told you the right things no. and you just Mm-mm. didn't believe it. You're like not, science. Not gonna believe no it. science. Mm-hmm. Science isn't like that. No. <laughs> hurricanes do not happen in landlocked areas, especially not landlocked areas that are like 1,200, 1,300 miles inland. I mean, come on. Well, it, Illinois, right? So maybe it was a hurricane that started over the Great Lake. Really? That's what you're going with? The Great Lakes hurricane? <laughs> it was a Great Lakes hurricane! Also, just maybe just giant hurricane that went in. Like I'm telling you, like there's been some big hurricanes that have gone uh, pretty far inland. Mm, no. Mm-mm. Not going for it. Alright, well, well, if you know about this hurricane, <laughs> if you were in this hurricane, you saw it in Illinois, let us know in comments down below. Let, let's get some witnesses, some survivors of the Illinois hurricane in the this Illinois commentary. Right here. Yeah, it, that's where it's going to be a very, very bare yeah, we're gonna comment section. We're going to have to call section. you a hurricane denier. Just let's find out. <laughs> a hurricane denier. Oh man. Yeah. Well. So there you go. But yeah, that was Empire State. Don't watch it if you don't have to. I mean, if somebody has a gun to your head, go ahead and watch it. It won't be that bad. But other than that situation, I can't imagine why anybody would want to watch this movie. I give it about one and a half stars out of five for our, or not stars. I'm sorry, we don't do stars here. We do Chewbacca chainsaws. One and a half Chewbacca chainsaws out of five. I was gonna say I don't have a sound effect for for stars. Like I, I don't know what you're gonna Why not? do. How do you not have a sound effect for stars? Everybody right, knows I'll get what a sound, sound to make. effect for stars. Maybe I'll make the tweak. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sound. That's the sound stars <laughs> make. Up in space. There's no. They're there's like no giddy little kid. <laughs> Yeah, I was. Yeah, sorry. We were just giving you a hard time on that one. So let's move it from a horrible, absolutely horrendous movie to what I'm hoping is going to be some good movies. And that is, let's break down the new movies from Comic Con. Now, I say new movies. There's been a ton of movie news that was released, little snippets for movies that have already been announced and stuff. But right here, we're going to just talk about the brand new movies announced for at Comic-Con. And you have to start it off with um, Legendary. Legendary probably had the biggest showing at Comic-Con this year because they announced probably what every Godzilla fanboy has wanted for the past... I don't know, when's the last Godzilla vs. Mothra movie? The 60s? 70s? 70s? Somewhere in there? Yeah, before, well, before born, we were born. Probably. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Pre, Pre-Brian and Brendan. <laughs> so that's that's what it, it'll be. And that is because Skull Island... Well, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I jumped the gun. Godzilla 2 has been announced. And not only will Godzilla be in this movie, but they have announced some of the monsters he'll be fighting. So he'll be fighting the ilk of Mothra, Ghidorah, and Rodan. And now Mothra is, of course, the giant flying moth. Uh, Ghidorah, I believe, is the three-headed monster. And Rodan is like a reptile type thing, too. Cool. So a lot of big back to the big back to the big monster battles. Yeah, and I think you can really look back at Pacific Rim and how they even called them kaiju um, to for the resurrection of this kaiju movie genre, um, which is pretty cool. I, I actually do enjoy that because Pacific Rim was actually pretty awesome. And now you think about it, and you're like, oh, those Godzilla movies really weren't that good back in the day. But yes, think they about were. what they can do. Yes, but think were. about what you can do nowadays. You can really spice it up with the special effects. You can add more of a sh- human story to it because you can make the monsters more than just this floppy foam thing walking down the road. I mean, I mean you can do I a don't lot even more. care. I don't even care. What it would be as floppy foam thing as you want. There was a bunch of like dragon things fighting ridiculous fighting King Kong. Why? Because we could. Well, there you yeah, well and then it, honestly, you know what the Godzilla movies were? They were the the setup that every like fanboy talks about all the time and like fandoms compete with each other like, Oh, I wonder who would win in a fight. This giant guy or this guy, right? You know, I wonder who would win in a fight. Uh, yeah, it's and just guess about who it was. It's about it nerd was like, fights. 
Exactly, and they just made it into movies. They're like, who would win in a fight, Godzilla or King Kong? Well, let's find out. Let's just do it, all right? It, it, and, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that because Skull Island actually um, was announced towards the end of Legendary's panel, which if you don't know what Skull Island is, that is the island where King Kong comes from, actually. And so they were going to do a whole prequel movie on that, and they kind of teased a little bit that there might be a King Kong vs. Godzilla movie in the future, too, after after we go through Skull Island and the Godzilla 2 movie. So a second one. A new, a new remake of that, because they did that already. But. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, but they'll... They'll go through, like, like all the big ones movies. now. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's, it's going to go through... So you already said like Mothra, right? So, well, Mothra, well, Mothra, Ghidorah, and, uh, Ghidorah, and Rodan—they're all going to be in Godzilla Two, is what I've heard is confirmed. So Godzilla is going to have to fight all three of those. And now I can't decide whether Godzilla is going to be the good guy or the bad guy, because sometimes he was That's the good guy a and sometimes he was the bad guy. Like if he's in a stand, if he's in the movie by himself, he's definitely the bad guy destroying the sh- city. Mm-hmm. But if he's in a movie with like the other ones. Did they unleash Mothra and Rodan and all those guys to kill? I thought Mothra was the Godzilla? good one. Uh, I don't be. remember. Well, I remember there was something that was they did have a good monster versus him a few times, like because I, I remember I saw uh, a little uh, meme about this recently where they they go ask the fairies to ask some other monster to to fight Godzilla. <laughs> the fairies. The fairies. <laughs> it was like ah, it's so fairies. ridiculous. So just like all right, yeah, that's. That, whatever, that's ridiculous. Where are we man. going with this one? But yeah, yeah. so... But, I mean, in, but I, know I know in the was, Godzilla vs. King Kong movie, yeah. didn't they unleash King Kong to fight Godzilla? So King Kong I think that they, they were originally thinking that, and then King Kong went on a rampage. Or King Kong escaped from whatever they had trapped him in or something. And so I never remember at one point they were... They were fighting. They're like, "Hey, yeah, we're gonna get Godzilla. We're gonna do this." And the guy was like, "Yeah, okay, that'll, that'll work for Godzilla." But what about King Kong? And the general's like, "What King Kong? What? <laughs> Why would we unleash two giant monsters that Why can just the city?" <laughs> I don't know. It just seemed like the thing to do. I know King Kong was not the good guy though by any stretch. He was just like, "I'm gonna destroy everything," right? <laughs> Well, he is a giant monkey. He's got to. He's got to do his thing, unless there's a beautiful woman that woman that he can climb to the top of the Empire State Building with. Then he might be like, all right. You have to get more. Unless there's Mario around. Mario. Hey, (laughs) there you go. There you go. He'll throw the barrels down. He'll climb the ladders. That could be the that maybe that's the new King Kong movie. Is King Kong vs Mario? It's got to happen. Why hasn't that happened? I don't understand. King Kong vs. Mario. I mean, you could call it Donkey Kong if you want to, but we should see that. I'm, I'm down. You're not yeah. down? I mean, I think part of the reason why is because there was already a lawsuit about it, but I thought they resolved it and were like, hey, you know what? Universal, who tried to sue Nintendo for having Donkey Kong, they're like, yeah, um, hey, looks like it's in the public domain because you claimed it was in the public domain when you tried to make a movie about it. Oh. Hmm. The whole public domain fight, hmm. which yeah. is why I like public. That's domain. what they should have: Godzilla versus the public domain. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you pop up and like destroy the FCC building and all the government. And, <laughs> oh, no more copyright laws. Oh. <laughs> which yeah. I mean, it should be better that way. I mean, they should cut back a lot of these copyrights. They're out of control. But if he's against the public domain, then maybe he's he's destroying all like the, the public libraries and leaving only copyright work intact. Maybe <laughs> so, Godzilla's a copyright hmm. lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll have a nice tie and a, a monkey fedora. It'll, it'll be a courtroom drama with, with Godzilla. <laughs> I object! And he'll slam his fist. Because... <laughs> so, so yeah, hey. So, hey, legendary so, pictures. I know you got all that legendary. stuff up. Uh, but if you want to take any of our ideas that we just threw out there, because they are golden, uh, go ahead and hit us up at WordsWhyFace, yeah, at Gmail, Twitter, any of those places. But yeah. So other news from Comic Con for new movies: uh, Mad Max Fury Fury Road has was announced, and the cool thing about this is it is by the original director who did the first three Mad Max movies, which was Road Warrior, Mad Max, and Mad Max uh, Beyond Thunderdome. The Beyond best. Thunderdome. Um, and uh, one of the stars that's going to be in this movie, and it makes me actually want to see it, is Charlize Theron. So um, she's just good in every movie she does. So yeah, that'll be cool. So, but uh, yeah, George Miller will is attached to direct. So hopefully we'll get uh, another cool Mad Max out there. No word as of yet from Mel Gibson, but I can't imagine he'll be in the movie. I yeah, think he would have to be like one of those. You know, he's now really old. 
and wandering around killing people. And, I don't know. Slightly senile Max is what they're going to call him after that. Um, Drunken Max. <laughs> Mad Max. <laughs> you know, it's funny, though. Didn't they, they announced uh, they have a Mad Max game coming out soon. They announced that before the movie, it sounds like, unless... Unless we missed the announcement about the movie a while ago or something. But. No, no, this was the first time it was announced was at Comic-Con, as far yeah. as I know. So, yeah, that's cool. why I'm saying it. It's in the new movie section. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> so, but, yeah. Um, another new movie, new project coming out. Um, Jack Black is attached to the Goosebumps movie. Um, apparently, the movie will be, the plot will surround what if all got released into the world at one time. So, Goosebumps, the old children's book. I mean, really, that came and TV out when... Show. And TV show. I was... It came out pretty much... It was my, I was the demographic for that book when it came out because it came started in the early to mid-90s, and that was really when I was about that age to walk, read those books. So, I'm actually looking forward to it. I hope they have the giant hamster. Um, I think the giant hamster in that book, like, ate some ooze and got giant. So, that was my favorite one of them all. I don't remember what the name of it was, but that was my favorite. It sounds like if Jack Black's attached to it, too, hopefully it'll be a comedy. Hopefully it's not him trying to go a serious children's horror book route. You know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you can have a serious children's book horror movie. That's, right that's why it better be a comical one. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, true, true. And Jack Black, he's he's that type of character. Yeah, he does some more adult-themed movie, but he also does some pretty good kids-themed movies, so... I'm looking forward to that. Comedy, be pretty right? yeah, it's good comedy. I think he's been in some serious stuff. I did not care. Mm. Did not care. Mm. Yeah, Jack he Black was in like... Clark, you're typecast it. You're a comedian. Yeah, yeah. That that's kind of your genre. That's where you should be. Like, yeah, he was in um like uh, a couple different movies. Like earlier on in his career, some, he was like, in some random, more serious movies. Like romantic comedies that he was in. For, and they were horrible. Whatever reason. So yeah, but <laughs> yeah, um. Now, this isn't confirmed, but rumors are that Joaquin Phoenix will be Doctor Strange in the do- upcoming Doctor Strange movie. So that that was a rumor that came out of Comic-Con, and I think he'll actually work pretty well. I'm really looking forward to Doctor Strange. I think that'd be a really cool movie to do because it, it, it's still the superhero stuff, but it kind of takes you more to the supernatural elements, and so you can kind of go down different roads with that. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, but really, you know what I was disappointed in? DC like, did nothing. Like, they did show some footage of uh, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, but that was about it. They didn't announce any other new movies, and we talked about it a couple months ago, where, like, the whole slate was kind of... It was supposed to be what was unveiled for Comic-Con, apparently, and the whole slate of movies was kind of leaked out there. I would have liked to have seen them kind of stamp it down and say, yep, these are confirmed, here's some actors attached. Yeah, don't give up just because the stuff is leaked. We'll still eat it up, you know? We yeah. We um, info. Unless that's all they had. If all they had was a list, then come on, guys. You could have stepped your game up a little bit more than been a list. Come on now. Step your game up, DC. Marvel's killing you here, buddies. <laughs> so, well, Marvel does have the better characters, in my opinion, because um, I don't like Superman. Comic book fan fight down below. <laughs> yes, please, please, <laughs> let us know. Um, and then, so, one of the last pieces of news out of there um, was that I uh, got the first trailer for The Hobbit. Uh, Battle of the Five Armies, uh, and that looks awesome. You know what? I saw the uh, the poster for that, and it said the final, uh, or like, I don't know, the final chapter or whatever. <clears throat> it's like, no, that's this is the prequel chapters. <laughs> no, well, I was also thinking, though, like, eh, that, that's probably actually pretty fitting, considering this entire battle that they're talking about for this movie was less than a chapter, so... And they did, in the book... They didn't, um, they didn't really they show, didn't show it in the book. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, when you split one book, which like, is the shortest of all three books, of all four books made for the the, the whole Lord of the Rings saga, um, and you split the shortest book up into three movies, I guess you have to add a couple extra pieces in here and there. Yeah, the shortest book, which was even intended to be a children's book, and now you're trying to make this uh, serious, big trilogy out of it. It's like, yeah, you know what, honestly... I keep saying like they they made a trilogy because they could, you know. Yeah. Lord of the Rings is so well. They're like, yeah, hey, let's 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 do it. Hey, hey, let's do it in 48 frames per second, unlike what most movies are in 24 or whatever, because we can. Yeah, because we, we want We to. have the money, we have the technology, we have the budget. We're gonna make no the money gonna back. Stop us. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make the money back. So who's who's hating on that? Um, I did forget to mention that Guardians of the Galaxy 2 has already been announced. Uh, so 
yeah, the number one hasn't even been released yet, but number two will be coming out in 2017. So, yeah. And I was kind of disappointed, too, from Marvel that they didn't give us any of these untitled movies. Really, just Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was the only one of the untitled ones that they revealed. So I was looking forward to, like, maybe a Deadpool movie or something like that. Wouldn't that be cool? I thought I they did Marvel say that there's going to be a Deadpool, Deadpool movie. Uh, I don't have any uh, any solid, concrete evidence on that one. You know what? I saw rumors about it, and I believe those rumors. There, you'll If they did not announce it, you heard it here first. There will be a Deadpool movie next year. Wow, next year. Why not? <laughs> okay, why not? <laughs> um, yeah, and I know Elizabeth Olsen was at the panel, and she's the one who's going to be playing Scarlet Witch, so that'll be interesting. She might get her own movie, and that's, that's again, that's kind of touching on the borders of the X-Men stuff, because Deadpool was in the Wolverine movie, so it's, it's kind of weird how they're dividing this. It's like, they're not allowed to really mention mutants, but there's going to be some mutants popping up in these uh, the Marvel Universe movies, so... Okay. Looks like there was some test footage that was leaked, like in the last day or so. Oh, okay. So, so there you go. So yeah, there is some some Deadpool stuff in the works anyway. Well, hey, I'm looking forward to that. So. And then Marvel's gonna be bitter about the leak. No Deadpool movie. They're gonna scrap everything they've done. <laughs> <laughs> They're just gonna be like, we will not make the hundreds of millions of dollars we would have made on this anyway. How dare you leak our information? <laughs> but and another thing about a Deadpool movie, that's gonna have to be a little bit more gritty than some of the other ones, because Deadpool as a character, he's a little bit more of a foul mouth. Uh, he's a little uh, less the hero. He's more the anti-hero. So I'm. He, he's very much the dark, humorous hero. Yeah, he that would if hero at all. If they don't make that movie a rated R movie, I'm gonna be upset. That's all I gotta say. It's gotta be a rated R movie. He's I don't not think a PG thirteen would do it. PG thirteen just wouldn't cut. But you know that that's all the new movie news that I got out of Comic Con. So let us know what you think. Are any of these movies you're really looking forward to? Who is the best people to throw down in the Godzilla slash King Kong fight realm? Uh, you know, let us know in comments down below. Are there any movies we missed that you're looking forward to? You know, hit us up at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at Gmail dot com. Of course, Google Plus, Facebook, and I already said it like three times, but I'll say it again. Comments down below. Do it now. Do it. <laughs> but I do. Yes. No. I say no. So you do now. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> but let's move it on. And that is to the other side of Comic-Con, which this is really the Comic-Con episode. I, that's what we should just call this. The Comic-Con episode. Yeah. But, yeah. And that's uh, – now, TV, there wasn't a lot of new TV released. Like, they didn't announce a bunch of new shows coming out, but they added a little a couple things to some existing TV shows or some shows that are already announced to come out. And they gave us a little bit new, more news on what to expect from these shows. So let's start it off. Um, actually, WB's The Arrow, uh, which is about Green Arrow. Huh? Huh? Yeah. DC Universe. Uh, like, that's the only part of DC Universe has really got going is their TV universe. But uh, a pretty good show. I've watched a couple episodes. Not a huge fan of it because WB always does this thing where they kind of um, they kind of dumb down some of the, the, the comic book stuff and play up some of the like or the relationship stuff which doesn't really happen in the comics as much except for some of the really crazy comics but one cool thing I thought was though that with the Arrow, uh, Ross Agul will be making an appearance as a villain in next season, season 3. Oh really? Whom yeah. we know from the Batman movies. Well, yeah. it, those of us who don't read the comic books know it from the Batman movies anyway. Those of you well, that those... read the comics know it from the comics. Well, yeah, you know him from the comics. Or if you saw the 90s Batman the Animated Series, he popped up a couple times as a recurring villain in that. And the whole weird story about how he wants his daughter to marry Batman so he can take over the League of Shadows. All that fun stuff. So... Yeah, so but that that'll be a really cool character just to bring into the DC universe. Um, now, what? How are they going to do it on the WB and then Gotham? You know, the t the new the prequel TV show. How you know when Batman is still a young kid and is really focused on Jim Gordon? Like, shouldn't he pop up in there somewhere too? Can you have him pop up in? No, why would he pop up in there if if it's a young Batman? If it's a prequel, because he meets. Um, yeah, Batman. They're gonna like. I, I imagine yeah. the show. Oh, meet it later, it. though. We yeah. know that it's gonna be later. But yeah, but like, if he's already a recurring villain in the Arrow, how can you have him be a recurring villain on something else? And totally why would unrelated? he be on the other one? 
again, I mean, they're going to show Batman grow up. I'm sure there's going to be a part where Bruce Wayne leaves and they're still doing the show, you know. Yeah, I, well, I guess maybe if it, if it goes on long enough or something. But, but then again, they might be just scrapping. Like It sounds like they're already you know getting ready to reboot the Batman series anyway, so maybe they don't care. So well, maybe yeah, they'll yeah. just say he meets him earlier. That's true, yeah. So, yeah, the... They're rebooting it pretty much with this Batman vs. Superman stuff, so which I don't mind. That's cool with me. Um, but then uh, The Simpsons, we talked about this last week, The Simpsons Family Guy crossover. We actually got some footage shown in it, and oh, man. like It was like a five-minute trailer, and it looks more epic than I even thought. I mean, I'm just giggly about it. I, there's one joke in it where Peter's saying, hey, it kind of looks like everybody has hepatitis or liver failure around here because uh, he's talking about how everybody's yellow. And... You better get ready for it because there will be an epic fight between Homer and Peter Griffin. They are going to throw down. They showed a couple minutes of this fight, and it looks amazing. Um, I, I, I was excited before, but I'm just over the top now. This this is going to be awesome, and if they take some of the same skill that they put in... I mean, it, that's assuming that the five-minute trailer isn't showing the best parts of the hour-long episode, but oh, it just looks awesome. Just yeah, I was gonna say because five minutes is is a significant chunk of most TV shows, but it mm-hmm. is uh, hour long, so yeah, but it should yeah. be cool. But if you like Family Guy and you like it when Peter fights the chicken, I think we're just gonna love it when Peter and Homer throw down. And it's oh man, it's just it's hey, just hey, looking hey, like both so much of them fun. were yellow. Ah, uh, uh, the chicken that's was true. yellow. That's true. It's, yellow. His, his main pr- antagonist is always yellow. Peter Peter doesn't like the color yellow, so. Oh man, yeah. I just can't wait for that one. That that one's September come here now because football Simpsons Family Guy crossover. Uh, September is going to be a great month. Just an absolutely amazing month. That's what that's all I got to say. Um uh, some more movie news that was released at Comic-Con, Agents of Shield, uh, the ABC TV show. Actually, they're bringing in a new character. They're going to have Lucy Lawless. We all know her from the Xena Warrior Princess. She was also in Spartacus the first season, and probably I think she was in the second season too, uh, that Stars TV show. She's actually going to uh, be a, play the role of a veteran S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, so that'll be pretty interesting there. Uh, maybe they'll give her her little circle thing. I mean, she was good with it as Xena. Yeah, because she was throwing it and mounting it off walls herself. The actress, little known. Little known. Did all her own stunts, and they just—they actually just recorded the actual path of that uh, uh-huh. that weapon. Little known. Little known. And it was it was sharp. Was it wasn't dull. It was it was sharp. Yep. People like, died I mean, in that show. Lots people, of people really died. died. <laughs> and since it was done in New Zealand, they just they just kind of brushed it under the rug. So they're like, <laughs> nobody died here. Let's bury these bodies before anybody finds out. But you're like <laughs> Captain America throws throws his shield around like that, so why can't we have her throw around her little circle blade thingamajigger? All right. I'm hoping that she will. You know, we can always hope, right? Um, yeah, and then um, Alexander Siddig, uh, you might know him as Dr. Bashir from Deep Space Nine. He was also, uh, he plays a role in the Da Vinci's Demons TV show on Stars, which is a pretty cool show. If you haven't watched it, check it out. Um, he will be in the Game of Thrones uh, season next year, so I love him as an actor. I was a big fan of Deep Space Nine. Not everybody loves that show as much as I did, but I can't wait to see him in there. He's actually going to be coming in as the older brother to the Viper. Uh, if you saw season uh, episode eight of last year, he was the guy who got his face crushed in by the mountain. So nice. Yeah, sounds sounds like a great way to to go. Yeah. Without yeah. Anything. Well. Yeah, and he could have won that fight, but we're not going to get into that now. So, <laughs> yeah, that definitely was a winnable fight. Um, so I know who could have won that fight even faster, though. Oh, well. Chewbacca. <laughs> and, I mean, we've, we've discussed this. Like, you can put Chewbacca in the arena with any single living being. Probably you could put him in the arena with every other person that's ever lived, and Chewbacca would still come out on top. So we all thank you, Chewbacca, for not destroying the world. Why you also, Chewbacca is the best at Thunderdome. Chewbacca is the best at Thunderdome because they had a chainsaw ah, in Thunderdome. They did, they did. They did which they was did. A not a wise choice when Chewbacca entered the Thunderdome. Because and, then uh, it was two men entered. No one but Chewbacca left the city. <laughs> so there you go. No one but Chewbacca left the continent. I mean, he just he goes, <laughs> he gets carried away. You know, you can't. He, when he gets ahead of steam, you really just can't stop the guy. 
But uh, then the last little bit of news that I thought worth mentioning from the TV world is that uh, they were giving some teasers on The Walking Dead Season 5, and apparently we're going to be introduced to a band of cannibals. So I kind of figured that would happen eventually, because if the zombies run out of people to eat, imagine they're going to eat the animals. I mean, that makes sense, right? Unless unless there are zombies that can only eat humans. Well, yeah, I I don't know how that works. But, yeah, and so then if you you have zombies eating all the animals, you need somebody to eat the humans. So uh, zombies eating the humans and humans eating the humans. What's the difference between the humans and the the cannibals and the zombies at that point, right? I I wonder, that is a good point. Like, what if a zombie rolls upon a cannibal eating a human? Like, does he think he's another zombie and, like, leave him alone? Does he care? Does Maybe he eat he other zombies? Anyway. Do zombies eat zombies? Well, I've never seen zombies eat zombies. Like, they always have some way of knowing that they can't eat each other. And I think in The Walking Dead Season 1, they actually cover themselves with a bunch of, like, zombie blood and stuff, and they're able to walk through the zombies. So maybe if you are covered with, like, human flesh, de- decrepit human flesh, that's all you need to do to... That's a, your zombie repellent. They'll just ignore you after that. Maybe. Or maybe if you covered a zombie in regular human blood, then all the other zombies will go after it. Hmm. Hmm. If you'd like to steal our ideas, let us know at words in my face. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think we've come up with at least three dozen movies on this show, so if you want any of them, we'll, we'll, we'll lease them to you, those ideas. You know, we're, we're fair. Just a couple million dollars. Each. For each movie you make. Each decade. Okay, just give us $100 million. It's all yours. The whole cat. <laughs> the whole we'll cat. Okay. Yeah, I mean, hey, we're not done yet, so stay tuned. We've already got what? Bears on uh, bears and Ferraris against gargoyles on... On, on elephants. On elephants, yeah. And, and then we had another one. Oh, monkeys yeah, on hippos? Good one. Gorillas on hippos. Yeah, monkeys on... Gorillas on hippos. It's a triple fight. <laughs> That, that and then all we need to do is really come up with two more animals riding other animals or vehicles, and then that can be the words from my face battle of the five armies. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> I think it'll be better than the Hobbit battle of five armies. I'm sorry, I'm a Hobbit fan, and all all you got to say is gargoyles on. Damn it, I keep <laughs> gargoyles, gargoyles on elephants. Gargoyles, gargoyles, no, gargoyles on, elephants. on elephants, gorillas on hippos, and bears in Ferraris. I mean, what, what else? What are you going to do about that? All right, you know, <laughs> you're going to unleash Chewbacca with a chainsaw, and he wins everything. So, yeah, that's going to be the only way to resolve that. Conflict. We'll have this huge epic battle during that movie, like, and it'll last and last and last, and it'll be like a stalemate, and then Chewbacca will walk onto the field, and everybody will just yeah, you'll get to like about the the two and a half hour mark, and you'll be like, man, there's so much still going on. How are they ever going to wrap this movie up? Like, there's only ten minutes, and then you're going to find out. You're like, oh. <laughs> No one expects the Chewbacca with a chainsaw. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll be popping up. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, let us know what movie, I mean, sorry, TV news that you were looking forward to at Comic-Con. Did we miss anything? Is there any of those ones that we t- uh, talked about that you're really looking forward to? Um, hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words for My Face on Twitter. Words for My Face at gmail.com. Uh, Google Plus and Facebook. We'd love to hear what you were thinking about that. Is there any announcements that uh, they didn't announce that you were really looking forward to? Anything like that? Hit us up. Let us know. But I think it's about that time of the night where we jump into Quick Hits of the Night. What's Quick Hits? There you go. I need more than one. <laughs> so, but let's start it off with the first Quick Hit. And that is Monster Hunter 4 will have Link costumes, as in Legend of Zelda Link, and weapons uh, available for customization in the new Monster Hunter. Yeah, is that is that going to be in all Monster Hunter 4 or just in uh, Ultimate? Do you know? I think it's just um, in Ultimate. I just... Eh. It's Monster Hunter 4, one of those. So, so, but hey, who doesn't like to run around as Link and have his boomerang and everything like that? So that'll be cool. Yeah, I mean, I like to monsters. do that. And that's why I played the Zelda games. There you go. Well, that's why millions of people play those Zelda <laughs> games. So, yeah, so that'll that'll be interesting. Uh, but let's move it on to the next quick kid. And that is, you can call me a dummy because Dishonored and Motocross Madness will be free uh, on Xbox 360 for August in games with gold, and I say you can call me a dummy 
because I bought Dishonored for $6 on the summer sale, and then 15 days later they announced it's going to be free. Now, I didn't pay a full like retail price for it or anything, but still. Really. Yeah. Why entice me with this game that I've wanted to play for cheap and then say, hey, we're just going to give it away for free. Jerks. But uh, then on the Xbox One, you're going to see Crimson Dragon and Strike Suit Zero. Uh, and I find it interesting that they're actually splitting it up. Xbox One gets its own set of free games, and I, 360 gets its own set of free games. So that's pretty cool. But let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters are both celebrating their 30th anniversary coming up pretty soon. And there will be a four-comic miniseries crossover event between the two. So we're probably okay. going to have two of the best theme songs of all cartoons mashed in together. See, I was waiting for that. I was like, eh, is he going to say a crossover here? I'm excited. But I was hoping for a crossover movie. Mm. See, I want to see the trans uh, not Transformers, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie first, because I think it looks awesome, but uh, it could go either way. I really I want to see that first, because it is a Michael Bay film, so he's really good at making trailers. I mean, Michael Bay might be the best trailer maker of all time. Doesn't always translate to the movies, so... Because, I mean, tell me, all those Transformer movies, the trailers make them look like they're, like, the most epic movies of all time, and you then you what? find out, the, not so much. Hold on, hold on. The trailers are extremely accurate. They're more accurate than people are expecting them to be. They show you all action and explosion, and <laughs> yeah, that's what do. he delivers. <laughs> that is what he delivers. That's very true. Those trailers are honest, <laughs> okay? Yeah, they are. They are. Uh, like I said, he's the best he says, trailer maker of all time. You see of this trailer? Here's the extended trailer. We call it a movie. <laughs> this is the two-hour <laughs> extended trailer, pretty much. Uh, so, yeah. So, I, I can't wait for that. I mean, it, it couldn't get any better. I mean, you have four Ninja Turtles. You have four Ghostbusters. Hopefully, they'll break them up in, like, to a team of two and two. And you'll have, like, Egon and, and, and Don, Donatello messing around and Michelangelo. And who's the Bankman? He was the funny one, right? That was uh, Bill Murray's character. Yeah, something like that. Those you know, two, I, 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 I want to see a, a duel. I want to see those those ray guns against ninja power, you know, throwing the ninja, I don't know, whatever they did, ninja stars and weapons. I guess they would have or to how, dodge that. They don't really have any magical ninja stuff. So. Uh, that's true. I guess but how about, how about like, like the villains from each series, too, fighting each other, like like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man against that giant guy, the Krag, you know, where he's in his big suit yep. and everything. That'd be pretty cool, too. Or Shredder. Shredder could mush up that marshmallow really quick, so... I'm looking forward to that. I might actually buy some comics to watch. Or maybe, those. maybe goats are going to possess uh, the. Well, I guess this this is going to have to get uh, pretty edgy for them. But ghosts possessing the the villains of the the Ninja Turtle series, and uh, that's why they have to team up. They have to team up. There you go. There we go. We we. If you didn't already write it, we've written it for you. So go ahead and send us a check. It's cool. We'll take it. <laughs> but yeah. So uh, let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is uh, Bayonetta Bloody Fate uh, is an anime. It's already been released in Japan, I believe, but it will be coming to America in English version. Um, and they released a trailer for that recently. It looks pretty cool. And it is supposed to be made, I believe, by the same people who made Afro Samurai, the Samuel L. Jackson anime. And that was really cool. So yeah. check and that to out. be fair, we were we were discussing this before the show about what the involvement of was with Afro Samurai because we saw it at the beginning of the trailer. Couldn't mm -hmm. quite make it out. They just kind of flashed it. We're like, whoa, well, Afro Samurai something. The trailer I saw too, like it was Japanese, like the names or something, and just had parentheses Afro Samurai. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it's by the same people as Afro Samurai. Now, it could be just, you know, the guy that got the coffee, the intern that got the coffee for the director of Afro Samurai. <laughs> Somehow it falls. You know, whatever it, it be, is. You know, the valet at the beginning of this, at the studio, you know, he valeted the same people's cars in both <laughs> productions, you know. It could be as simple as that, but we're, we're going with the makers of our, the same people, so... Yes, yes. Uh, okay, sorry we don't read Japanese. A guy that, a guy that watched Afro Samurai made this. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody who was on the same street once as a child of the same guy who made Afro Samurai and met them once and shook hands is making this movie. So, yeah, there could be anything. It really could be, but this is quick hits. This isn't, like, fact hits. Just quick hits. That's how we roll. But let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is, there's going to be three new Star Wars comics coming out. So this is a lot of comics because comic are they, con, con. are they canon though? Because uh, I believe they will. Be I, I, 
I can't imagine they'd make it if it wasn't canon. So that'd be stupid if they made they it. They might. I mean, they made a whole bunch of other stuff that's apparently not canon. Well, they made that before they were told it's not going to be canon. They were told yeah, it was going to be canon there before. There were some things that they weren't going to be canon, I think. But I don't know. Mm. But I, we'll see. So, I mean, who can't get enough Star Wars stuff? I can't get enough Star Wars stuff. <laughs> Let's move it on to the last. Metachlorians? Metachlorians. If you don't know what Metachlorians are, those are what lets you control the Force. So, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so let's Piss move it boys. last. Quick hits of the night. And that is Lucy somehow came in number one, and when I say somehow, it's just because Hercules... Uh, was the only other new movie released. Uh, but Lucy came in with $44 million domestic box office. Coming in number two was Hercules with 20, 29 and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes came in with about 16 So that was your quick hits of the night. But yeah. <laughs> he just wanted the close-up with his face. He's like, hold on, let me put my face in the camera like this. <laughs> yeah, he's still doing it. Oh, there you go. Oh, wait, I'm talking over him, so it's not switching. But, uh, but yeah, let's move it on to the last story of the night, and that is one that is very close to my heart. Uh, again, this is all stemming from Comic-Con. That'll be our common thread of the night. But Mass Effect 4, actually, Bioware had a panel at Comic-Con and announced, yes, Mass Effect 4 is coming out. Uh, we all knew it was coming, but they, they gave us a few extra details about what's going on. Now, they were very, very scarce details, but I'm going to talk about them anyway. Uh, the number one thing is that um, the Mako will be making a return. And if you don't know what the Mako is, that was your cool little exploration vehicle when you drop yourself down onto a planet or... There were actually some missions centered around the Mako. Uh, you drive it around. It was pretty fun to play with, so uh, that'll be cool. So it kind of lends to that, since that was an alliance vehicle, a human alliance vehicle, that it won't be very far from the timeline of Commander Shepard, but they didn't really mention if it's going to be before, after Shepard, and if it's after Shepard, then that means there's no more real space travel because at the end of the game, I won't spoil it for you, but you know what I'm talking about if you played the game. So that'll be weird. My hope is that it's pre-Commander Shepard um, because this universe is so huge. There's just so much you can do with it. I mean, they built up this giant galaxy of all these thousands of places you could go to, and it'd be a shame if they didn't use it more. Um, could it be simultaneous to, to Shepard? It could be. Like, it could be going on at the same time, so maybe you're part of the Alliance. Shepard's doing his thing over here to stop him. You're doing your thing over here to help stop the Reavers. Uh, Reapers, whatever they're called. Reavers or Reapers. I think it's one of the two. Um, and so, I think Reapers were the ones from uh, from Infamous. Could have been both. But, but yeah, those evil, evil machines... Those darn evil machines. And I love Mass Effect. But, uh, yeah, so um, you will be another human protagonist, it looks like, which kind of disappoints me because they built up all these great different races and they gave them such unique uh, abilities and unique personalities for all these different races. And it's kind of a shame for them to kind of stick you back into the human one. I was kind of hoping they would say something like, uh, hey, you can pick which race you want to be, kind of like the original Dragon Age Origins where you could pick between eight different classes, pretty much. It was, like, really two different types of human, like highborn, lowborn, uh, a mage. Uh, you could pick highborn dwarf, lowborn dwarf, or elf, highborn, lowborn, you know, stuff like that. And it really, it just, it would add an extra bit of depth. I'd like to see a little bit more customization than just being a human. Yeah, they throw all those other races in your party, but uh, I'd like to be maybe a Krogan. You know, those giant hulking guys. Or maybe a Solarian, because they're super smart. Or You would want to be. I would. I would. Because little known fact is the Krogan are the only race that can't beat Chewbacca. I'm not saying they can beat him, but they can last longer than every other race. So... <laughs> Chewbacca does not agree with my assessment. Yeah, he, he does doesn't not. agree with my assessment, but yeah. So that, that'll be there. But um, now they did say that the game is years away from launch, which is disappointing because you've had years to make it. I mean, yeah. Maybe it'll mean that they're going to make a good game because that's been one of the problems. Some of these games, they come out a little too fast. They just try and chug, you know, chug them out. They don't do anything new, right? Yeah. Let them take the time. Let it settle. Hopefully it doesn't turn into uh, Duke Nukem Forever. But come on, just let it go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that came out horrible. But, uh, I mean, Bioware is still making a really big game right now. They're Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, they're focusing on that right now, it seems like. So hopefully they make that into a good game and then turn around and polish up Mass Effect 4. Uh, so 
really looking forward to that. But, you know, what are you looking forward to in the Mass Effect 4 game? Do you want it to be a prequel? Do you want it to be a sequel? Do you want it to I take I want it to have nothing to do with the other Mass Effect games. Nothing to do. It would be you cool. know why? Because I played about 15 minutes of Mass Effect. Mm, you missed out, man. I played through Maybe all three Mass Effects okay. twice because they can continue the storyline through all three. Like, and your choices you make in number one pop up in number three and number two and stuff. And so I played it as a good guy and a bad guy both ways through, and it was just epic. I mean, yeah, That's the cool. ending of the whole trilogy was the just... biggest letdown ever, but what can you do? That's cool and all. I, I didn't play them. So if I if I want to pick up Mass Effect Four, it better have nothing to do with that. I better not have to have decisions because I'm not going back and playing one through three. <laughs> I don't want decisions in my game. Make I'm them for me. Say it like I don't, I don't want to go back through one through three. Maybe I do. Yeah. You know no. what? Maybe this will encourage me too. But if you're going to do that, you better release a a, a remake with all three at one or mm. all four at one. That's that. what I'm looking forward to. I hope before Mass Effect 4 comes out, for because it's going to be a next-gen one, and you can't really port your saves over from the next-gen, so they're going to have to start it over again. I don't think you'll have to worry about the decision thing, to be honest. Cause, but it would be really cool if they did give you a, a Mass Effect trilogy with all the DLCs and everything there, and you play 1 through 3 again. Because, you know, they could fit that all on one disc nowadays, which is crazy. Yeah. Blu-rays. You know. Well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how big those games were, but I don't care. Actually, they were pretty Put it all big. on one disc. Just do Put it. Put it all on one disc. I know you can do it. Don't lie to me. But yeah, I mean, those are some of the best storytelling in games I've ever played. So, Bioware, I mean, really, the first Mass Effect game, I played that, and then I went back and I said I had to play all Bioware games I could get my hands on, which was, uh, at that point, Dragon Age Origins, and that still is one of my favorite games on Xbox 360. I also got got a chance to go back and play Knights of the Old Republic, the old, like, uh, Xbox. Oh, I still uh, have that. One. Uh, yeah, I, I have that for the PC. Those, that's an epic game. I mean, just simply epic. So, yeah, Bioware, you guys have kind of pioneered the American RPG genre, so I'm looking forward to whatever you guys are going to do. I, I don't know if I go that far. I mean, well, who pioneered Bethesda it? Bethesda was still... Well, okay. Bethesda, not even Bethesda. Whoever was making the uh, the old, Bethesda. like, Quest for Glory games and, and Might of Magic games, those things, like, mm, mm. the 80s pioneered it. No, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with what I just said. Because I, I wasn't alive through half of the 80s, so... It's because, you, I'm sorry, you weren't around when the Pioneers were around, when the, when the PC games were rough and men were men, and I don't know, tumbleweeds. <laughs> and you had to type in the with, code. And it was all just text-based. Do you want to And you couldn't yes. save. Drink this potion, yes. And you couldn't save. There was no saves. You young kids and your saves. If you made a bad decision and died, you died. We had to copy down these page-long codes to get back to where we were. But yeah, so let us know what you think. What are you looking forward to in Mass Effect 4? Uh, Do you want it to be, you know, a continuation? Do you want it to be a prequel? Do you want it just to take nothing to do with it, like Brennan said, and uh, be totally new story. Because like I said, this is a huge universe they've developed with so many different places they could take it. So let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Where's My Face on Twitter, Where's My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. All good places to get a hold of us. But yeah, so, um, wow, that show went by really quick. Was that really 50 minutes? Did you guys have as much? that was a long yeah, I hope you had as much fun you as you liked we did. it, comment down below. If you didn't like it, let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll read. Yeah, tell we us read all, read all your comments. Yeah, all we of do. Them. And we respond all to three. half of them. So, you know, <laughs> all three of them. So that means we've responded to one and a half. Yeah, yes. I didn't complete my sentence in the, the half one. But yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, hit us up outwards from our face. Of course, I'll need another horrible movie of the week next week. So send those on in if you'd like to torture me with the horrible, horribleness of the movies that are horrible. And we're working on a couple other projects out there. So um, we're going to have different stuff other than just this show. So... Stay tuned to the channel. We got some pretty cool stuff coming up in the next month or so. So I hope you enjoy. Um, but as always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. Yo. And we are gonna headbang our way out of this joint, player. <laughs> they, they, they just with, go with the play again. All right, we'll 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 just get out of here. I I, I why can't I say player?
right, good night, everybody. Wow, my hair's really crazy this time. Boop.